Welcome to the demo of the testing results of the RISC-V chip that was designed as part of the Harvest Security Project. We would like to thank many collaborators and sponsors of the project. In the Harvest Security Project, we designed and fabricated two test chips. The second chi test chip contained a RISC-V processor core and a machine learning core. The architecture of the test chip is shown here. It contains two versions of the RISC-V processor core the original version and the obfuscated version. The obfuscated version was obfuscated using logic locking to secure its design. A selection circuit allows us to select one of these cores to be connected to the top, to the top level audio interface for testing. This figure shows the layout of the fabricated test chip. These are the die photos of the fabricated test chips and this is the picture of the package chip PCBs were designed to allow testing of these chips by FPGA as well as by test instruments. This picture shows the FPGA testing setup. A custom PCB was designed to connect the chip to the FPGA. A socket on the custom designed FPGA hosts the test chip. The PCB was connected to the FPGA board via FMC cables. An ARIA-10 FPGA board donated by Intel was used for chip testing. Two power supplies provide DC power supply to the core and to the I.O. This figure shows the architecture of the design synthesized to the FPGA for testing the RISC-V chip. The design contains a ROM program memory that stores the program to be executed by the RISC-V processor. A data memory which is used by the processor as data storage. Two RAM memories, one stores the expected write data activity on the data bus and another the expected address bus activity on the address bus. These memories are populated with the expected bus activity observed via simulation. A bus arbiter and a controller provides interface between the chip and the memories. A monitor block checks the activity on the address bus and the data bus and compares against the expected activities stored in the ROM memories. After execution of the test program, the monitor block sets the address pass and write pass outputs to indicate whether the activity on the address bus and data bus passes as compared to the expected activity. A key loader block loads the activation key to the secured processor for its activation. A clock divider module provides various clocks needed for the memories and the chip. The red LEDs on the FPGA board are used for testing a blinking LED program. This picture illustrates the assignment of the LEDs and switches for controlling the tester. A reset switch um, is used to reset the CPU. A core select dip switch selects a processor core. When that switch is in zero state, the original non-obfuscated RISC-V core is selected. And when that switch is in one position, the obfuscated RISC-V core is selected. A key load switch um, starts the process of loading the key into the chip for its activation. The results of the test are shown on four LEDs. Key load done LED indicates that the key loading process is finished. Key load pass LED indicates that the key was loaded successfully. Address pass LED indicates that the observed address bus activity passes. And the write pass LED indicates that the observed activity on the CPU data bus passes. Welcome to the testing of RISC-V processor chips. The first test is a functional test of the original RISC-V processor core. For this test, there is no need to load the key given that the processor is not obfuscated. So we are going to select the original processor core and um, remove the reset and uh, let the processor execute the sample assembly code that is written that takes the processor to all the instructions <clears throat> and the checker inside the FPGA is checking the activity on the address bus and the write activity on the data bus and as we can see the address and pass as well as the write data pass LEDs both 
turn on indicating that the processor successfully executed the program this demonstrates the successful functional test of the original risk 5 core in the next step we are going to test the obfuscated core we are going to test that with the same program and before loading any key so we are going to select the obfuscated core and we are going to remove the reset and let the processor execute the same program we notice that the address pass turns led turns on but the write data pass led stays off indicating that there was an error on the data bus activity and that is due to the uh, fact that we have not activated this processor yet so in the next step we are going to load the key into the obfuscated core so we turn on the load switch and we see that the key is loaded and is loaded successfully now that the obfuscated core has been activated we can rerun its test so by removing the reset switch we let the processor execute the test program and we see that both the address pass and the write data pass leds turn on indicating that the processor successfully ran the test program and this proves the successful functional test of the or the obfuscated risk 5 processor core for the next test we have written the assembly code of a blinking led that flashes the red leds on the fpga at about a hertz frequency first uh, we are going to run this test by run this program by the original risk 5 core so we select the original core and we'll remove the reset and let the program execute and as we see the red leds flash at about the hertz frequency notice that this program also um, checks on uh, the address and data bus activity that that um, those also pass the green LEDs for address and data are also passing notice that we have not loaded the key because this is original core and original RIS-5 core that doesn't need any key next we are going to have the obfuscated RISC-5 core run the same program but before loading any key into that processor so before activating it so we choose the obfuscated core and remove the reset and let the let the obfuscated core run the program as observed um, none of the leds turn on because the obfuscated core has not been activated yet so there is no activity on the LEDs in the next step we are going to first uh, load the key into the obfuscated core to activate it so we apply the load signal and we can see that the key is loaded successfully the load done and load key done and key pass LEDs turn on now that the obfuscated core has been activated we are going to remove the reset and let the obfuscated core execute the flashing led program as expected the flashing led program runs successfully additionally we can also see that the address pass and the right data pass green leds turn on as well so the obfuscated core is executing a flashing led program successfully this concludes the first successful functional test of the risk 5 processor chip this test was run at 25 megahertz the chip is actually designed to operate at 200 megahertz however due to the fpga limitation we are not able to run it at 200 megahertz in future we will use test instruments capable of operating up to 250 megahertz to perform a speed characterization of the chips we will update you with further results thank you for watching this video